Son has a peanut allergy. School continues to give him or allow him to get peanuts. I am not the original poster. Original post by U School PNUTBTR 2828. In R Legal Advice. Reminder do not comment on linked posts. Trigger warnings. Discussions of allergies. Child endangerment. Medical issues. Less than. Mood spoilers. Frustration. Concern. Anger. Relief. Resolution. Less than. An NBSP. Hash 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 son has a peanut allergy. School continues to give him or allow him to get peanuts. 2. November 15, 2018. This has been an ongoing issue since the second day of school. Where he was given peanut butter crackers. We sort of brushed it off as a new school year. New students. Teachers a bit frazzled dealing with first graders no real big deal. His allergy isn't really severe but still not fun to deal with and can potentially become life. Threatening. We had already informed the school of his allergy before the year started and even talked directly to the teacher about it because the default snack during the day if no other parents brought in a snack is peanut butter crackers. We even offered to purchase a special alternative for him. But they said it was unnecessary as they have other alternatives. So we figured the issue was over when a few weeks later it happened again. This time they claimed he grabbed another student's snack and ran off to eat it before they could stop him. Now my little one can be a little bit of a hard head and I can potentially see this happening so. Again we talked to him about peanuts and how dangerous they are to him. He continued to adamantly deny doing that and said Mrs. gave them to him. We then decide a meeting with the principal is in order. Not to blame the teacher or accuse her of lying but to hopefully get this under control. Again a few weeks of no more issues. Then it happened again. Once again the story is, he grabbed it and ran off and ate the whole package before we caught him. Okay, so a six-year-old managed to grab an unopened package of crackers. Elude a teacher and an aide and eat the whole package before he's caught? He's crying and swearing to us he was given them. And after so many incidents we have to start believing him. Another meeting with the principal and teacher gets us a, do not worry. This won't happen again. We have another long sit down with our son to explain that even if it's given to you. Ask to make sure it doesn't have peanuts or other nuts in it. Then. The very next school day. The meeting was on Friday. He's given another snack of peanut butter crackers but this time he asks if there is nuts in it and. Then he's given the alternative. We figure it kind of sucks that the kid has to be the adult right here but at the end of the day. He's learning to ask about nuts. We send an email to the principal detailing the issue and say that the next stop is the school. Bored if he is given peanuts again. We get a response back, if he's asking now what's the problem. He should have known to ask to begin with. We are teachers not parents. We have no issues for a while until this week. Some parent brought in PB and J sandwiches for snack time and he was given one. He forgot to ask about nuts but thought, it was only in the crackers. We find out the parent was aware of a nut allergy in the class. It's on the parent snack sheet. And brought in just a jelly one that was made separate from the peanut butter ones. He was not given this one. We spent a day at the hospital. We've had endless talks with him about nuts and do our best to teach him but some of the blame has. To be on the teachers here right? Do schools not have an obligation to deal with allergies? The school lunch seems to have zero issues with this and has never given him a nut when there are. Several things on the menu rotation that contain them. He gets a special tray that was nowhere near any nuts. This is in Indiana. Any help is appreciated. An NBSP. Hash hash hashtag UPDATE. School kept giving our son peanuts even though he is allergic. Lawyers are expensive. Tuesday, February 26, 2019.
The past three months have been long and expensive but it's finally resolved. Now I can't go into a lot of the details after but I can go over some of the details that happen. During. We contacted a few attorneys and finally found one we were comfortable with and then the fun started. We first sat down with the principal and teacher with our attorney and he didn't say anything. Except he needs to talk to someone else and not us. Our attorney then began collecting documents and statements, affidavits from our pediatrician. Another doctor and even got another opinion. Then he began having us get documents from the school. Some of which they said we couldn't have but our lawyer assured us we could have them. So he sent the school district some nice letters and a few phone calls later we had everything. Talking to our insurance and the hospital was the easiest part of this entire thing which I thought would be more complicated and our insurance even offered their attorney's services to our attorney. Which turned out to be quite helpful with some of the other issues that came up along the way. He spent about a month going over everything, talking to doctors, getting more statements and reaching out to other parents etc. During this time our child was moved from his normal classroom and placed in a special needs classroom, something we did not agree to or with. Our child has no developmental problems and an allergy hardly is a special need. So our lawyer then starts having us request more documents. Same act with the school and he had to send off letters and phone calls to get the new stuff. Related to him being put into a special needs classroom. The lawyer began sending letters about how the school district is punishing our child with the move. To a more restrictive classroom and a different curriculum and magically the next day he's back in. A normal classroom. Finally after three months of mostly playing the game with the school district getting them to give us the paperwork and requests they are legally required to did we all finally sit down with the school district's attorney and our attorney. Now I can't go into a lot of the details but I can tell you they settled without us moving on to the next step of having our meetings in a courtroom. Lawyers are expensive. And so are hospital bills. I just hope all of this doesn't make our child a target for the rest of the year. We are going to be moving and changing jobs over the summer hopefully. Thanks for all your help and advice guys and girls. The plans everyone brought up for us to look over was incredibly important because we already had them on file with the school. An NBSP. P.S. This is a repost original Bo are you here? Reminder I am not the original poster. I feel like there's so much going wrong here. The parent who made the jelly sandwich wasn't allowed to specifically give it to him. What was the teacher trying to prove here? I did not even think you are allowed to bring peanut stuff to classrooms anymore. Wow some principles are useless. It could have been avoided if the teacher actually made an effort to safeguard. They didn't care because the child did not go into anaphylactic shock each time he ate it but all. It takes as one time. They really played with his life and health. I'm glad the parents fought for him. I feel for parents who can't because of financial reasons. What's the point of allergy charts if you're not going to follow it? Slash. What is wrong with that school? Were they trying to kill him? The whole thing is insane and I hope that was a large settlement. I feel sorry for any kid trapped in that school. They have awful educators. Who suck so much they're throwing away money that should go to teachers on lawsuits. I want to know the state. Because I'm already guessing. Yeah no. I get that teachers and school employees have to deal with a lot of students and their needs. But, WTF. This was repeated and ongoing. Now these poor parents had to spend money on an attorney and so did the school district's taxpayers. For the school's lawyer. All because some asshats didn't take a child's allergy seriously. And to put her son into a special ed class as a response? I have two special needs children and find it appalling they do this as punishment, as it says. 
everything I need to know about their perspective towards special needs. I bet you that the teacher or the principal doesn't believe in allergies and has been giving it to him trying to catch them in a lie and now both of them are going to lose their jobs because of it. How hard is it to keep track of an allergy? The student is 6. This is 100% neglect on behalf of the school staff. I'm sure the PB&J parent specifically mentioned the jelly one and probably had it in a separate container too. Not really surprising the insurance company offered attorney services. They don't want you to claim. Jesus. That's terrible. The teachers and school are making a big violation. Almost like if they are purposefully harming the kid. This school sounds terrible. It's wild to me that the standard snack was even peanut butter crackers to begin with. Peanuts, tree nuts are the biggest most common allergy you're going to come across in a school. I studied to be a teacher in near every school I was in. And all my schools growing up were nut-free campuses on the whole because it was easier to just ban peanuts than try to sort out who you might risk killing with a snack. I thought that was pretty standard practice everywhere. And that even if it wasn't an entirely nut-free campus. Most schools would be aware enough to not make peanuts the standard snack for their kids if they're providing snacks. Like what were they even thinking? I'm baffled. In the UK if a child has a nut allergy the school goes nut free. No nuts at snack, lunch, anywhere. If the child were 13, maybe you could put some responsibility on the child to manage his allergy and advocate for himself. But a six-year-old? No. This is very much on the teacher to manage when providing food to such a young child. Sure sounds to me like the teacher did it intentionally. She is probably one of those people who thinks that he just needs exposure to it. And it'll go away. Or it happened and the kid didn't immediately go into anaphylactic shock. So, it's not that bad. Or some other craziness. My kid's school you're not even allowed peanut anything. My kid has to use sunflower butter in her PB. SF. J sandwiches. She actually prefers the taste so. Dodged that bullet. This is a huge ADA violation. And the lying on the part of the teacher and the retaliation against the kid makes my blood boil. The minute the principal became aware of this, they needed to take it seriously. It's his job to ask. Bullshit he's six. It is actually your job to make sure the children in your care are safe you fucking dingleberry. That teacher, and possibly the principal, too was one of those people who doesn't believe in allergies. And you should ingest the thing you're allergic to to make you get over it. Over 10 years ago I worked at a special needs preschool. The kids were high functioning. But because they were very young we had some overprotective parents. One mom decided she wanted her kid on a completely gluten-free diet. And that meant no physical contact with anything containing gluten including paint and play-doh he also couldn't be in contact with some of the chemicals in our cleaning supplies it was voluntary not health threatening but we followed those rules to the t all year we had one slip up where he ate a goldfish cracker off the floor but we immediately noticed and followed procedure get him to the nurse for charcoal looking back it was a little absurd that we catered to all her demands but if we could do all that then these teachers could remember one child's single allergy. It's not like he was allergic to a long list of things. As a Brit, it blows my mind that parents take it in turns to provide snacks for a whole class especially when there's a nut allergy. We regularly get emails home from school reminding parents that there's a nut allergy in the school. We don't even know if it's our kids' class. And therefore we shouldn't send nut products in kids' packed lunches. 
I actually had an email from my youngest kid's nursery the other week saying that a sun cream brand had now added almond oil to the formula so parents aren't allowed to bring it on site. My kid's school asks that snacks be peanut free and gives a list of any other allergies in the specific class to avoid that year. This last year my kid was in a class that had no peanut allergies so the teacher sent out a letter saying we could send peanut-based snacks if we wanted to. But I'm so glad they don't rely on first graders to decide if they should be able to have the snack. That day, I'm not sure my kid would always decide the right thing if her snack looked particularly delicious. That day, also, shout out to my kid's school for having a gardening program so the kids garden and contribute to their school lunches from their own garden and also the school lunches are homemade by lunch staff. And a lot of the components are locally sourced. Bread, meat, etc. And lunch is free. And this year they are offering a free breakfast as well. And they allow children to bring a water bottle for their desk so they can always drink water. During the day, I've been whining a lot lately about my son's school being nut-free and what an inconvenience it is. He's a picky eater and nuts are his protein of choice. But this really puts the blanket ban on nuts in perspective. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.